I'm Kelly Devine, Assistant Director with KYPC Division of Right-of-Way Utilities. This is the crowd's implementation and right-of-way process presentation. The following will be an in-depth tutorial involving step-by-step -step instruction of completing different types of parcel batches for payment processing within crowds. Our presenter is Will Kennard. Will has been with KYTC since 2005 in a variety of roles. He is part of KYTC's Office of Information Technology, where he serves as a business analyst on the crowd software development team. The right-of-way division appreciate Will and his team's hard work with the crowd system. Our division is also grateful for all the right-of-way agents and right-of-way supervisors across the state for the vital role that you played on the crowd development team. Last but not least, I want to thank Shannon Deering, Michael Bevan, and Marion Sizemore for the role they played on the development team as well. I appreciate everyone's efforts on getting our new right-of-way database system to this point of completion. Thank you. I will now turn the presentation over to Will Kennard. Hi, my name is Will Kennard and I'm from the Office of Information Technology in the Transportation Cabinet. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the Crowds Acquisition Project. Um, I'm going to start with some high-level information and then we'll dive in and see some screens from the uh, new application. But so overall, so what is Crowds? Crowds is the Kentucky right-of-way data system and it's something that we're doing in phases. Uh, we already did one phase and it's called Crowds Appraisal in 2018. <clears throat> And that was all about being able to create your projects, create your parcels, and then do appraisals on those parcels. Um, and now we have the Crowds Acquisition Project coming. It's going to build on top of the Crowds Appraisal Project, consume the Crowds Appraisal data, and extend the workflow to include purchasing the property after we value it. Um, so now you can do your appraisal, but after we do crowds acquisitions, you'll actually be able to buy the parcels. The crowds acquisition project is going to consolidate all the existing paper forms and electronic data that you're used to doing your acquisitions on into one web application. So that's web application is crowds acquisitions. Uh, and built into that application, there's an approval workflow and the ability to generate the complex uh, acquisition reports like the payment and condemnation packets. Uh, so if you've done any acquisition work with us before, you've probably seen something like this. Uh, it's a list of everything that you, we have to get together to acquire a parcel. Um, and if you look on it here, there's a lot of stuff and some of it's a form right now, some of it's in RWMS, um, some of it's like a supporting document. Now, going forward, uh, you're going to be able to put all of this into crowds and manage it all there instead of having to manage some things on paper forms and some things in RWMS. Uh, it's all going to be in one place for you. And let's kind of look at how it's laid out in crowds. Um, this is just uh, an overall view of how. Uh, the objects and crowds are arranged. So at the very top, you always have a project. Everything flows from a project. And then on a project, you have parcels, parcel one, parcel two, parcel three, more parcels. You know, there could be a hundred parcels. Each parcel has appraisals. And now the new part is each parcel is going to have an acquisition. Uh, and then what makes up that acquisition are going to be these packets. Uh, so if we look at, this is just an example, with parcel three, they've got a payment packet, a tax packet, a miscellaneous payment packet. Um, and we'll see more about what the different types are for uh, here in a little bit. And then inside each packet, you have specific documents like, you know, maybe this packet has a record of contacts and an excess purchase property. Um, and then uh, more documents. And then also, you have attachments inside your packets, like maybe your deed or 
uh, your SOS status. Um, so Crowds is going to let you build all these documents and attachments into a packet. Now let's go see how that actually works in Crowds. All right, now we're gonna dive into a project page in Crowds. So this is what the page for a single project looks like. You can see it's divided up into different sections here. Um, project information that tells you what the project is, you know, the description, the routes and funding info, project assignments and master assignments, how you do your project and parcel level assignments, uh, your parcel list, your comp sale books for the project and range of values. Um, so we'll look at some of the new ones like range of values and some new things you can do on the parcel. Um, just for an example though, this is what the project page looks like. You know, we're looking at one project, the item number, and you know, this is what we're doing. Um, but next we'll look at the range of values section here. Uh, so the range of values, you're probably used to doing this on a piece of paper right now, but it's going to be in crowds. Uh, so it should be very familiar. You know, it's different grids where you can add your sales, like, you know, add your residential sales, add your agriculture sales, um, add your, all the, your other kinds of sales, do your min and maxes, uh, do your site improvements. So very similar to what's on the form right now. And then there's a workflow built into crowds where the uh, preparer has to submit the range of values to the supervisor and the supervisor has to approve it before we use the range of values later during the uh, minor acquisition review process, which we'll see too here in a little bit. Um, you can also print the minor acquisition or the range of values from right here and you'll just get a nice PDF. Uh, this is probably more like the form you're used to seeing. You know, it's just the grid of all your sales and your site improvements and your ranges. And then you can see who worked on it and who approved it and when. Um, we can even print your electronic signature on the form now. Um, so all that range of values stuff is going to be built into crowds now. Uh, so each project will have a range of values. Uh, one of the other new sec things that we did was in the parcel section. So we'll go into the parcel section now. And so the parcel section, it's a list of all the parcels on your project. Um, and what we did is we've added some buttons up here at the top. So this new button is generate and print notice of acquisitions. Uh, if you're the supervisor and you're ready to do your notices of proposed acquisition, you can uh, hit this button. What it's gonna do, it's gonna show you a list of all the parcels on your project. Um, you can choose one parcel, you can choose all your parcels, uh, and then you can just hit print and crowds will go out and grab all the owner info, all that parcel and project info and build all your notices at once. Um, so like, here's what it'll kind of look like. In this example, I, I came out with 10 notices. You know, if you had a hundred owners, you could come out with a hundred notices just from clicking once there. Um, you can see that, it, you know, it fills in all the uh, project info. It's got the owner info in there for me automatically. So I can just print off those PDFs and uh, get ready to mail them right away instead of having to do them one at a time or anything. The other uh, new thing that goes right along with that is the export owner addresses button. And if I hit that button, what it's going to do is going to download all the addresses from uh, my parcel owners as a uh, file that I can then open. Uh, the file looks something like this. Here I have it open in Excel. Um, you know, from Excel I could merge this down to uh, Word and do a mail merge to generate labels. Or if I uh, if I have one of those special label printers, uh, almost all of them will uh, work with this kind of file uh, automatically. But so using this, you should be able to do uh, uh, mailing labels for your notices uh, that you 
just previously did, put them together and mail them out real quick instead of having to do them one at a time or go through some uh, parcel by parcel process. Okay, now we are going to move from the project page down to the parcel page. So here's my list of parcels on a project. I'm just going to choose a parcel to go into. The parcel page looks like this. Um, you can see it's divided into different sections again. Parcel info tells you uh, where the parcel is, what we're exactly we're acquiring. Um, overall info like that. The appraisal section, of course, tells you how much the parcel is worth. And the new section is acquisition. So that's the section that we're going to look at today. Let's go into the acquisition section and it has two subsections, uh, the packets and the status. Uh, and then we'll look at what are inside these. <clears throat> inside packets, this is where I uh, as the acquisition agent do most of my work, um, I add packets to the uh, parcel and then do my work inside there. Um, there's also, you can see there's the condemnation flag over here um, and we'll see the different packets and that condemnation flag uh, more here in just a second. Um, we can see that you know, there's, these are the different packet types I can add right now. Miscellaneous, payment packet appraisal, payment packet MAR, tax payment packet. Um, and we'll get a chance to see what each one um, is about here in just a second. The other section is the status section. Um, and this is where we record some things that happen outside of, uh, of crowds that we still need to track and know about. So. You know, uh, we have some info about when the title attorney, who the title attorney is, and you know when they requested the title and stuff like that. Um, we have some info about you know when the condemnation attorney is assigned, when they filed the suit, um, just some uh, relocation check boxes uh, to make sure we don't miss that. Uh, and then there is the parcel clear uh, checkbox down here that we uh, want to get to eventually. Um, but let's go into back to the packet section and we're going to go into this payment packet appraisal here. Uh, so the payment packet appraisal is used on parcels where the valuation is narrative or appraisal. So we have some kind of appraisal to figure out how much the parcel is worth, whether it's the standard or the narrative. And then uh, Payment packet appraisal is going to be to go all the way through this process. The owner is going to have to agree to our uh, offer or us agree to their counter offer. Otherwise, we'll uh, go into a different process, the condemnation process. But let's look at what this payment packet appraisal looks like. I'm going to go inside of it here. All right, and here is the main page of payment packet appraisal. And there's a lot going on here, so I'm going to spend a second talking about it. Um, over here on the left hand side are all the sections of your packet. Uh, so these are the, all the things we saw in that list earlier. You know, we've got your record of contacts, your attachments, where you do your supporting documents, um, your parcel summary of encumbers and leases, your payment summary, your offer letters. Uh, so it's things from RWMS and things from paper form, they're all going to be there. Um, and as the acquisition agent, you can just click any of these sections and start working on them. Um, it's up to the agent uh, how they want to do it. You know, I could, and each acquisition is different. So it doesn't try to force you into a, a totally specific order or anything. Um, there are some rules like, um, but it's has a lot of, the agent has a lot of the power here. And then if we look up here on the top, these are the steps in the workflow. So right now, this uh, specific packet is active with the acquisition agent. That's why this step is orange. But we can see all the other steps that we want this packet to go through eventually. So after the acquisition agent does his work, he sends it to the project manager. 
the project manager does his part and he sends it to the district row supervisor. The supervisor does their part and they send it to central office. Central office does their part and they send it to the program coordinator to get the EMARS vendor and invoice data. Uh, we get all the physical checks requested and they uh, get sent to central office. Then all the checks get sent out from central office to the district or the consultant. And then all the checks get delivered to the recipients. Um, so that is the goal of this packet is we want to get all the way over here to this side where we've delivered all the checks. So as we're doing our work over here on the left, you know, we're negotiating, we're figuring out how much those checks are, who they're going to go to and then we move the packet uh, through the workflow. Uh, another cool part about this is um, everyone does their work here on this screen. So you don't have to print the packet out and mail it to Frankfurt or get it to Frankfurt somehow anymore. It's all right here in crowds. Um, if you're the agent, once you're done with your part, the project manager can just log into the same screen and see what you did. There's no passing around of the paper forms anymore. Um, you can also print the packet at any time. There's this print button right here. Uh, and that'll make the big PDF if you did want to print it. Um, let's look at some of the specific sections of the packet real quick. Uh, record of contacts. Uh, so this is much like what you're already doing, you know, just recording all the meetings that we have with the owners or the representatives. Uh, one cool thing you can do is Hit the insert checklist button and it will insert these um, uh, standard questions that you're supposed to answer for every acquisition. Uh, all, you can see the questions numbered one, two, three, four, just like that. And then you can just start typing your answer uh, after each question um, and then save that meeting. Uh, so it just saves you from having to copy and paste those questions or making sure you have the most up to date questions. Uh, it'll just put them in there uh, in your meeting for you and you can just uh, enter your answers at your leisure. Uh, the next one we'll click on attachments. Uh, so this is where I add all the supporting documents that I might need like here's my signed MOU, my SOS status, you know, my color property photos, you know, whatever I need for this particular acquisition I can uh, attach it here. The partial summary of encumbrances and leases. This is just where you in, uh, record if there are encumbrances or leases uh, for this parcel. You can also fill out a designated contact if there's like one owner or you know one rep that they all want you to contact. Um, the next section is the payment summary section. Uh, so this is a new one. I think this is all on paper right now, but now it's going to be in crowds. Um, and this is where you add your payment summaries, which tell us who we're going to give a check to and how much each check is going to be. So, you know, you could add one payment summary if you're doing one check. If we need to deliver 10 checks, you can do 10 payment summaries. You can just add them all right here. Uh, another cool thing that you can do on the payment summary, um, you can see these are all the fields that you're probably used to doing on the uh, paper form, but there is an import check details button. Um, and this will pull over the, if you already filled out a check recipient on your memorandum of understanding, it will just pull them into the payment summary. So if you already did all the trouble to fill out your MOU, you can just pull in the check recipients straight into the check payable stuff on the payment summary. Uh, the next section here we're looking at is offer letters. Uh, so crowds will be smart enough to tell to pick out uh, only the valid types for you, like, you know, is this entire or partial or more? And then the agent, you just have to put in your offer date and hit generate, and it'll make a PDF offer letter uh, with all the owner and parcel info already filled out, including the offer amount. Um, we'll see what that looks like in just a second. And then you can also come back here and, uh, like, if the appraisal got revised, uh, do another offer letter and it will pick up the new uh, appraisal amount and mark the, the second offer letter as revised. Uh, the next section here is the administrative settlement. Uh, this is an optional section. There is a check 
box here, include administrative settlement in your packet. Uh, so this is how the agent just manages uh, if we're doing an administrative settlement on this one or not. Um, if you click it, this will print with the packet. If you unclick it, this will not print with the packet, will not move uh, with the packet. So um, that's totally optional. And the next section is also the same way, excess property. Uh, I can just check to include it or not. And as my situation, uh, you know, deems. The next and last section is the memorandum of understanding. Um, and what you can do on here is fill out your whole MOU. Here's all the, the grids that are on the MOU and all those check boxes are down here too about this is a total, this is a partial, we're getting a sign, we're not getting a sign, all that is on there. Um, so you can fill out all this on your MOU and then you can hit this print with data button. That would generate your MOU as a PDF. Uh, so you could then print that PDF and have the owner actually physically sign the paper and then go back to attachments and upload the signed MOU. Um, if you are already doing like signatures in Adobe, you know, you could have the owner sign that PDF and then save the PDF and upload the PDF to attachments. Um, either way, or you can just print it totally blank, fill it out by hand, have the owner fill it out and then upload it. Uh, either way will work, but we do want to end up with uh, a signed MOU uploaded uh, for each of the packets. And there are some rules. Um, when the agent gets done with their part, uh, they have this submit packet button. And what that submit packet button will do is go out and check uh, each section and make sure you're passing all the minimum requirements and then it will tell you if you're missing any of the minimum requirements so here's like an example I hit the submit button and it's telling me I still need to upload a signed MOU I still need to upload my uh, title sheet cover reports I need to do something on my record of contacts you know, I need to add a payment summary uh, so it will just walk me through all the little steps that I I need to do to move the packet on to the next step in the workflow. Um, also, these uh, icons over here will change color from gray to green if you're passing all the uh, all the rules for a certain section. So here is an example of a payment packet that has gone all the way through the workflow. So the agent has uh, done that submit button and they passed the checks. So they got up to the manager, to the supervisor, all the way through the process. We can see that all checks delivered is green. That means that's complete. Uh, we can always see the history of the packet. You can see who approved it and when. And there's also a detailed status history um, that will show everybody who touched the packet. So we can see this packet went from the agent to the manager to the supervisor. Then the supervisor sent it back to the manager. Then the manager sent it back to the supervisor. So you can go backwards in the flow too. If, uh, if it gets to your step and you notice that there's something missing or something that needs to be corrected, uh, you can always send it back to a, one of the previous steps. You actually get to choose, uh, like if I was the supervisor, I could choose to send it back to the project manager or to the agent, it be up to me. Uh, and then you can see at the end, we get to all checks delivered. Uh, so the owners got their money and uh, we should be ready to move on to uh, doing the deed. Um, the next thing we'll look at with this packet is you can actually print it. So we'll see what that looks like. If I hit the print packet button, it makes a PDF. Uh, so in this example, you know, I got got 31 pages together of this packet for me uh, and it puts it in the correct order that you need um, to send it up in automatically. Of course, you don't have to print this packet to send it up, but uh, it just puts it automatically in the order that everyone is used to. So we can see, you know, here's my payment summary. It's the first page. We can see who we're paying, how much we're paying them. Um, we can even see who delivered the check and stuff like that. And then uh, we can see the approvals are also on here. Uh, so we can see who the agent was, who the manager was. 
supervisor who did the central office part. And uh, what's cool is you can add your signature to your user account. And when you approve something, uh, we'll print your signature uh, next to your name. Make it official. Uh, it'll put the offer letters in your packet for you automatically. So here's that, like the offer letter we were talking about earlier. You can see it, it'll put the owner and the project and parcel info, the description. It'll pull in the uh, offer amount from the approved appraisal. Does all that for you automatically and then puts it in the packet automatically for you too. Uh, all my attachments will print with the uh, the packet in the order that they're supposed to be. So like here's my signed MOU attachment. Uh, it's automatically part of the packet and it'll always, it'll be there every time we go back to look at the packet, it's part of it and it'll be in the correct order. So uh, I can generate the uh, PDF packet or I can just look at all the info in the app but either way, it's all in one place uh, for me. I don't have to go back and forth from RWMS uh, to paper forms. I also don't have to send a big packet of paper forms up to Frankfurt or to the district or anything like that. They can look at all my forms right in crowds. Uh, no need to uh, do the physical copies. So that was the payment packet appraisal. And we'll go look at uh, some of the other packet types and how those are different here. Okay, now we're gonna look at one of the other packet types. So this is payment packet MAR. Um, so this one is used for parcels where the valuation is minor acquisition review. So instead of doing the appraisal, we're doing the MAR on this one. Um, the rules are just slightly different, which we'll see, uh, but it's very similar to payment packet appraisal too. Uh, so here we are, we're on one parcel, and this parcel has a payment packet MAR. So I'm gonna go into the packet Here is the packet homepage. So this should look very familiar to you from the last one. Uh, we have the same workflow steps where we go from the agent to the manager to the supervisor all the way to delivering checks. So again, the goal of this is to deliver the checks, uh, to negotiate and then deliver the checks. If we look over here on the side, the sections are also very similar. Uh, there's no excess property purchase because we're not doing those on a, a minor acquisition review. And there's one new section, the actual minor acquisition review section. Uh, so we will look at that section here. So the minor acquisition review section, it's just a grid of MARS. So, you know, maybe usually you only have one. Uh, there are scenarios where something changes and you would have to add another one. You would do it at the same spot um, and then they would all be saved and uh, archived here. And then the last one approved is the, the uh, one that we actually use to do the offer letters and everything like that. Um, each inside the MAR, it's going to be very similar to uh, what you're doing now. It's the grids of you know, the grids of area acquired and the grids of easements. Uh, and then we add them all together um, at the end to get a total amount, approved amount. And then uh, the um, after the agent actually does the MAR and figures out the amount, the supervisor has to approve it before we can do a move on to the next step of like doing an offer letter and negotiating the with the owner based on that amount. Um, but all the rest of the sections are the same. You know, I'm still doing my contacts. I'm uploading my supporting documents and attachments. You know, I'm still uh, documenting my encumbrances and leases. I still have to do payment summary to say who we're giving checks to and how much. Offer letters. Um, you know, my offer letter will look slightly different because it's a MAR, but overall it works the same. Admin settlement works the same. MOU works the same. Uh, and then I can also print the packet again. And again, it'll arrange it all for me. Uh, like this example is 29 pages. Here's my 
uh, payment summary at the beginning, just like last time. And then I can also, it'll put in the new uh, MAR specific stuff, like here's my minor acquisition review and it put it in the correct order. And for this example, it's page 20 out of 29, but uh, it'll put it in there. You know, and I can see my easements and if I did improvements, site improvements, other, you can see it's all added up here. And then it'll have who did it and who approved it. Uh, and it'll have the signatures uh, very similar to the other like payment summary that we saw. It'll also put my range of values in the, uh, in the packet automatically for me. So there's like page 21, here's my range of values, all my grids, are in there so again um, I don't have to print it out to send it up but if I need to print it out all I got to do is click once and it'll put everything together for me and um, and then I can save it or email it or print it as a PDF whatever I need to do and then the as we saw the payment packet Mars is very similar to payment packet appraisal uh, it just has the minor acquisition review section added on and the uh, excess property section removed. Um, but the agent still has to submit it and the uh, system will still check to make sure that they did the minimum requirements. And then it'll notify the project manager that it's time for them to look at it and approve it and then so on up the chain. And we'll move on to the next packet type here. Okay, next we're going to look at condemnation packets. Uh, so condemnation packets, I could start as a payment packet appraisal or pa payment packet MAR. And then if we're unable to come to some kind of agreement with the owner or, you know, totally unable to contact them or whatever, um, we might need to do the condemnation process. So if I'm the agent, uh, I can go to my parcel. So this is one parcel again, and we can see this R this parcel already has a payment packet appraisal, you know, maybe I've been working on it, I've been negotiating with the owner, but then it comes to a head and he's not going to agree. So what I can do is I mark the parcel as a condemnation and then um, that will archive the work that I did on payment packet appraisal and it will let me create a condemnation packet. Now when I create the condemnation packet, it is going to copy everything that was relevant from my previous payment packet appraisal or payment packet MAR into that packet. So all my record of contacts, my parcel summary, my attachments, um, all that will move automatically. I'm not going to lose any of the work that I already did. And we'll kind of see how that works. So if I'm the agent and I hit the flag button and then add a condemnation packet, I'm going to end up with something like this and we can see that it started out as this payment packet appraisal uh, from this day to this day but then we turned it into a condemnation and again it did it copied everything from that matters from this payment packet appraisal to the condemnation packet automatically for me um, now let's go into the condemnation packet and look at it so we'll notice that it's just a little different from uh, the others. Um, if we look at the workflow here, uh, it is the same until we get past central office. Uh, after that, instead of requesting checks and delivering checks, we send the packet to legal so they can go to court. And then uh, we wait till the civil action is complete to record the results of uh, whatever happened in court in here and we get all the way to the end. But so the end of the condemnation packet, instead of delivering the checks, is completing the civil action. Uh, so the workflow is just a little different, uh, but it still does use the same kind of idea where each person in the chain uh, can hit, the, hit a button to send it up to the next, uh, the next uh, part of the chain. Uh, still, I don't have to print it out and send it to Frankfurt or anything. It's, I just, uh, hit my submit button as the agent and kick off this uh, chain. And then if we look over here on the left hand side, uh, you can see the sections are slightly different. We've removed 
There's no excess, there's no admin settlement, there's no payment summary, um, and there is one new one, the condemnation pay statement. Um, but so in these other four sections, it, it will copy everything that I did um, in the previous packet. So I don't have to type on my record of contacts again. My offer letters will still be there. I'm not doing any new ones as the condemnation uh, process, but the ones I previously did will still be there. And my partial summary will still be there. My attachments will still be there. I can add new attachments. I can edit the partial summary if I still need to. Um, and then let's look at the condemnation pay statement, the new section. Um, so if you're used to the paper form, this would be similar. Uh, section two uh, has some stuff for the agent to do, but section three and four are all about what happens uh, after the agent and has already sent it up to central office and central office has sent it to legal. Uh, so central office does section three and four later in the workflow, um, basically on that last step before the civil action is complete. But if you're the agent on the pay statement uh, inside section two, um, all you have to do is do this owner section and the area section, and it will pull in the uh, offer info automatically, whether it's from the appraisal or from the MAR. Uh, that'll all be there automatically. And if you're the agent, all you got to do is you can choose the areas and the owners from the parcel. So if the parcel's all right, it's real easy. You can just choose them all and they'll appear right then. And then if you'd already done your other sections, uh, you can submit the packet right up uh, and kick off the condemnation process. Um, here's what section three and section four look like that the central office group does at the end of the process. So, you know, they're telling us what kind of award uh, came out of court and, you know, how much the verdict was in court and if we owe interest and, uh, you know, all that, all that good condemnation uh, data that we need. And then here's an example of one that's gone all the way through. So you see it's green over here, civil action complete. So in this example, you know, we already, we've recorded all that award stuff and the record of posting judgment. And it's all, all part of our condemnation pay statement over here. And again, we can see who approved the packet and when and all that stuff. Um, and again, I can print the packet. When I print the packet, it will, uh, gather all the info together and put it in that order for me again. So this one was 27 pages. Uh, the first page of the condemnation packet is this condemnation memo that we're, we're sending to legal. Uh, so it'll build this letter automatically with the, you know, who's sending it and who we're sending it to and what project is it about and all that. Uh, it'll put my condemnation pay statement in there. Um, it'll have, you know, there's some approval stuff, which supervisor looked at my packet and approved it. Um, it's all in there. Uh, so the workflow for condemnation packet is slightly different in that we go to court instead of delivering checks, but the work that the agent does is basically the same. They fill out those sections over on the left. They hit the submit button to send it up. Everyone else has their own submit button like or approve button. If I was the project manager, I would see uh, approve or return to the agent. If I was the supervisor, I would see approve or return to the agent or return to the manager. So uh, the workflow part is, is similar. And then again, you can print the uh, big PDF at the end if you need to, but you don't have to because uh, crowds will send it automatically to the next uh, people in line. All right, so that was condemnation packet. There are two more for us to look at and we'll move on real quick. Okay, the next kind of packet we're gonna look at is a tax payment packet. So this kind is used to pay the property owners uh, prorated property taxes uh, for the portion of the year after the cabinet acquires it. Uh, so it just helps you figure out how much is owed and then who we're gonna pay it to and 
helps track all that. So right now you're probably doing this one all on paper, uh, but now this is going to be in crowds and it's going to have a workflow and uh, it'll be saved and tracked and everything. So here we're back on one parcel and we're looking at the packets for one parcel. So you see this one has kind of a mix of different stuff going on. Uh, we've done two miscellaneous, so we've had some unexpected expenses, but uh, we also have this tax payment packet. So let's dive into that. All right, so this should be starting to look familiar to you probably. Uh, if you see the workflow here, it is the check delivery workflow. So this is the same flow as we do uh, for payment packet appraisal and payment packet MAR. The acquisition agent starts it off. We have to go through these different levels of approval. Then we have this process to get the checks requested and mailed, and then the checks get delivered. Uh, so again, that's the goal of the tax payment packet is to deliver the uh, money we owe for the prorated property taxes to the owner. If we look over here on the left-hand side, um, we've only got three sections. Uh, two are, we've seen before, payment summary. That's, you know, uh, how many checks are we making? Who are we making the checks out to? How much is each check for? Attachments, that's my supporting documents. So for this tax packet, you know, that would be my tax bill, my tax receipt, something like that. Uh, and then we have the reimbursement request for incidental expenses. Um, so this is the new section that we haven't seen yet. And um, this section is like, you're probably doing it on like an Excel sheet now or a calculator even maybe if you're doing it. Um, so we'll jump into this reimbursement request for incidental expenses section. And here it is. So this section, this is divided up into three sections. Uh, section two is like the totals. Section three is who we're paying. And section four is where you figure out uh, how much we're actually paying. So this does match back to that Excel sheet. If you're used to using that, um, you should fit right into here. Um, so the exciting part is probably uh, section four where we actually calculate the amounts that are owed. Um, we just need the agent to tell us the beginning date of possession and the ending date will automatically fill in as the last day of the year. Um, you can change it if you need to for some kind of extraordinary circumstances. So then we can figure out how many days we've owned the property. Um, we need the agent to tell us how much uh, is the amount of the tax bill and what's the value of the property on the tax bill. But everything else uh, we can figure out by looking at the MAR or the appraisal and the parcel. Um, <clears throat> crowds will also know, uh, is this a total acquisition? Is this a partial using a MAR or a partial using an appraisal? And it'll automatically use, it'll take you to the correct section uh, and won't let you use one of the wrong calculations. But so here's the county one. So. We ended up with the county amount, so this will move up to section two uh, in the totals. And there's another um, section just like this for city tax share that's exactly the same where um, if you just, you got we gotta know the amount of the tax bill and the value of the property, and then we can figure out how much we owe the owner. Um, so once we do that, figure out how much we wanna pay the owner, uh, you can print the uh, the whole form out and have them sign it and then upload it to the attachment section uh, so that you have the signed reimbursed request for incidental. And again, you can print this packet uh, as the PDF if you need to. It, you can just send it up to the next step without printing it yourself. It'll all be there in crowds. So here's like, it's 10 pages. Again, the payment summary is first, you know, who we're paying. Uh, and that's the end of tax packet. Uh, that one's simple. And now we'll look at the last one, miscellaneous packet, which is the simplest. All right, now we're ready to look at the fifth and final packet type. This is the miscellaneous payment packet. And so this one is used to pay for any unexpected expenses that we run into while we're doing the project. So, uh, you know, we hit a fence accidentally and need to pay for it, or, 
you know, we dug up some septic that we didn't mean to. Any, anything that uh, just comes up that we need to pay, we can do this miscellaneous payment packet now. Uh, so you're probably doing this on paper, but now this is all part of Krauts. Um, as you can see in this example, there's two miscellaneous payment packets on this parcel. Um, that is valid, uh, you know, if things keep coming up, we need to keep paying. So you can keep adding miscellaneous payment packets to the parcel if you need. Um, so this is one parcel again, and now I'm going to go into one miscellaneous payment packet and go into the packet. And again, the workflow is the same as mostly what we've seen where we're trying to get to the all checks delivered step at the end. Start with the agent, go through all these approvals, uh, get the checks made and sent, and then deliver the checks. Uh, and if we look over here on the left hand side, this one's only two sections, uh, very simple. It's the payment summary, um, who we are going to make checks to, how much each check is going to be, and then attachments, uh, supporting documents. So for this, this would be like, you know, your estimates to repair the fins or your quote to fix the unexpected damage. You know, we could just uh, put those in the attachment section and then they'll become part of the packet. And as the agent, you can send the packet up to get the checks made and then deliver the checks. Um, and then of course you can again print the packet just like all the other ones. Uh, so, you know, see this one's 14 pages. Maybe I had several payment summaries or maybe I had a lot of uh, supporting attachments. Uh, but again, it'll put them all together. Um, if I need to print it or email it as one of these PDF packets, it'll all be there for me automatically. Um, so these miscellaneous packets are basically just payment summaries to show who we're paying and how much and then attachments to uh, support those payments. And that's the end of the five different packet types that we have in crowds. Uh, so I hope that helps you understand uh, what will be possible in crowds and how the work you are doing now uh, in RWMS or on paper forms will change in the future uh, to become part of crowds. Um, so thanks for listening and I hope that was informative and everyone have a great day.